Okay. Uh, all right. So. Oh, all right. Here. Hi. Okay, there. I'm upside down. Hello. Okay, there. Happy? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Let's get to it. So, uh, now I ended off the last video not making much sense because words were just randomly being stringed together. So I apologize. I didn't make much money on that last video either. I don't have enough hits on my YouTube video site. Yeah, just not. Yeah, well, maybe one day I'll make it big. I didn't make much dollars, no. Okay, so what we're gonna do with these two guys, so this is still the sum and differences of functions. We don't have any, we don't have equations for these. Now, what do you notice about what's given to us here? This is, this is f of x, and what is this here? f minus g of x. So what do you think we're going to have to figure out? G, right, okay. So what we're gonna do, just to organize it nicely, is we're gonna figure out what my um, point values are and, and what I can use to make life a little easier. All right, so um, what are my x values here? So my x values, I've got negative four, I've got negative two. I'm just looking at the important ones, okay? The ones that are kind of uh, dotted bigger. Okay, the key points, two. And then I don't have enough room for three here, but I mean, here's three. Uh, why do I not worry about what three is? Why, look at the two graphs. What can you tell me about why? So there's no three here. So do I need this one here? No, okay, so let's cross that off. All right, now what are my y values associated with those x values? Two, two, negative one, and one. All right, so let's do, let's look at what g minus, sorry, f minus g of x is. So for those same x values, so for x is negative four, what do I have here? I have two, what do I have here for negative two? I've got negative one, and then here I've got one and one. Okay, so basically, if I have f minus something equals two. So what is this g of x value? So f minus g of x equals this number, okay? So two minus something equals two. That's a zero. So two minus something equals negative one. So it's three, two minus three equals negative one. Here, I've got one minus something equals one. So it's negative two. And then one minus zero equals one. All right, so I've got all of those values now. I take these same x values and then I can plot those on my graph and that will give me which function, folks? G of x, that'll give me the graph of G of x. So negative four and zero is right here. Negative two and three is right here. Zero and negative two is way down here. And then I've got two and zero, which is here. All right. So now I'm going to connect these points. Okay, so this is the graph of g of x. Okay, now is my note, my note is on the other side. So. If we, we notice that if we had uh, something out of the domain in our composite, we have, to, we have to make sure to account for it, right? So if the domain of the function g, it must be negative four. The domain of 
g of x is negative 4 to 2. Since the resulting function, since f minus g, it only had a domain of negative 4 to 2. So we have to take the smallest one. All right? Okay. So now our last page here. So we're just, we're looking at the domain. So the domain of the function g, it must be negative 4, 2, since the resulting function f minus g of x only has a domain of negative 4 and 2. So we have to make sure that we're kind of keeping track of uh, any restrictions like that. So the domain of a function that is the sum or difference of different functions is made up of the common domains of all of the initial functions. So for f of x, here's an example. So for f of x, set, let's say the domain is x is greater than 2, and the domain of g is x is less than 4, so the domain of the composite is going to be those two limits, right? So the, it's, it's going to be between the 2 and 4. Mm -hmm. So uh, and just to recall for function notation here, if f of x is x squared minus 2 and g of x is 3x plus 1, so evaluate. So we did, we did some of this a little bit in grade 10. We started introducing it to you. Grade 11, we did a little more. And now we're kind of doing a lot of it, right? Just in using function notation. So what you do basically is take your, normally we have an x here, right? But this is telling you to replace 5 instead of the x. So 5 squared minus 2. So, yeah. So f of 5 f of 5 equals 23. And then now here, for these ones that are embedded, like one function inside of the other, figure out the inside one first, work inside then outside, just like order of operations. So figure out f of minus 3 first. So what is f of minus 3? Negative 3 squared minus 2. 9 minus 2, that's 7. So f of minus 3 equals 7. We're going to use that. And instead of g, f, g of f of negative 3, I can say that that's equal to g of 7. So then I can evaluate g of 7. So 3, 7, plus 1, and 21 plus 1, 22. So that's g of f of negative 3. Okay? So, like always, there's some homework for you. Practice makes perfect, right? So, what are you going to do? Make it happen.